What is that preferred rhythm from what you've seen? Is it pulses of conflict? Not too soon, but don't have too much conflict for too long. Give them a break for a second. I mean, I don't know if there's that stand standard uh, thing, but I think you need the first act has to deliver the dramatic question. You know, ideally there is a protagonist who has a very clear objective. Ideally there are stakes, so there are consequences if that protagonist doesn't succeed. And the higher those stakes, the more dramatic the story. Ideally there is a scene and there's a whole book, uh, Save the Cat, that is kind of based on that. Ideally you have given the audience a reason to side with that protagonist, which a lot of movies and scripts leave out completely, which is amazing to me because it's one of the main ingredients. Why would I as an audience care if that character sees his father before he dies? You know, There must be something that shows me a humanity inside of that character. And it can be a bad, bad ma mafia, serial killer, whatever guy, but something that I can relate to where we share uh, our humanity in that moment so that he becomes the vehicle for me to discover things about myself in the end. I think that's the secret that every audience, it's a very, I, that's a very selfish process. I think every audience really comes to the theater to learn something about themselves and not about Oklahoma or space or whatever, but about their emotions in that moment. But that only works if you can create a connection between the protagonist and the audience early on. So that would probably be the formula I'm looking for. Is there a connection? Is there a clear want which leads to the dramatic question, which is will this protagonist successfully save the love of his life, whatever, whatever. And then you go into the second act where there are, where you have to look at the conflicts. Is there enough? Is, is what he, the steps he is doing, are they escalating in a way that at the same time is believable, but also doesn't need too much patience? Because in real life, he would probably first phone his grandmother and then he would go, da, 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 da. and we don't want to sit through all that. We want the condensed version, we want the fake version, but we want it to feel emotionally real, which is a hard thing to achieve, but it, it's something that you can very clearly track throughout a second act, I think. And the first half of the second act, normally, traditionally, is, is called like the fun and games part, which is where most the of the scenes that you see in a trailer are in the first half of the second act, where the promise of the movie, the reason why people came, is to see those scenes. You know? It's like, oh, there's a, a man that talks to his snake. Mel, Mel Gibson with this beaver in Jodie Foster's movie, you know, that would be the first half of the second act where we kind of have a little bit of time. The clock isn't ticking quite as fast yet. And then most of the time the mid point halfway through the story is a more fundamental twist to the whole story. It turns out the beaver is real or has whatever, whatever, you know, can actually talk. Or something that changes our whole look on the story and the direction of the story which I think is super important because otherwise a second act gets very long. Like if it's only a one directional thing, which exists of course and is, exists successfully, but it's very hard to execute to keep the audience's attention without something that in the middle kind of breaks the movie up and gives it a whole different direction. And a lot of time, like in, an, in a spy movie, it would be our protagonist finds out that the agency he's working for is actually the the bad guys, blah, 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 blah. So suddenly it's, a, or in Mad Max, it's when they, they've been driving into that one direction and now they've achieved whatever they need to achieve and now they're literally turning around, coming back. That would be kind of the midpoint. Then the stakes have to be raised in the second half um, of the second act and lead to the major confrontation. Then if you go by the hero's journey, which I believe in a lot, Joseph Campbell and all that kind of stuff, there is the major confrontation. It looks like the hero is going to die. He metaphorically dies, sheds his old ego, learns something about himself that he didn't know before that is most of the time painful. And that enables him because he doesn't break in that moment. He almost breaks, you get him to the breaking point. And you can see that in almost every movie that that is being done because we need to really break a character to see what he's made of, right? If you never challenge a character, you don't know what he really has inside of him. 
So you almost break him and in that process of staring death in the face, metaphorically or obviously in a romantic comedy, it would be the girl is dating another guy. You know, it doesn't have to be death literally, but it's the death of that. So now our protagonist learns something about himself that was in his blind spot that he didn't know before, which now enables him to, be, to use that as a tool to change. That's why character arcs and development are so important. Become a different person and that enables him to achieve the goal that he hadn't been able to achieve before. Now we're in the third act where most of the time he has to defend where he's where he is challenged by the antagonistic force that he's been battling throughout the second act one last time and that's where the big dragon or Sauron or whatever you know rears his head for the first time attacks him and he has to prove that the change that he just went through is a permanent one that can be challenged and he will, will still survive with his old ego. End of story. So that would be at least the that is the mythology, the, the thousands of years old, you know, paradigm that stories are building. You can go away from that paradigm as much as you want, but I think it helps to know that that is what audiences intuitively are expecting. And someone who does that really great is Tarantino. Like I don't think there's anyone who knows this story structure better and messes with it and messes with your expectation, which is great but it's different from not knowing it and just writing something into the blue and then wondering why people don't identify with the characters or aren't hooked to a certain development or something like that. So that would be my, my formula structure that I kind of, if I'm, if I'm reading it and I'm engrossed, then it doesn't matter you know, if it's a three act structure or whatever. But if I feel like my attention kind of drifts and I don't really care, most of the time the answer is in that structure that somehow doesn't deliver what it needs to deliver.